I'd like to welcome Ontario Finance Minister Peter Bethenthalvey to the show. He became an MPP of Pickering Uxbridge in 2018, initially serving as President of the Treasury Board and later named Finance Minister on December 31st, 2020. Before he entered politics, Minister Bethenthalvey served in senior leadership roles in financial institutions, including President and CEO of TD Securities USA, as well as co-president of DBRS, which is a credit rating agency. He also served on boards of several charitable organizations. I'd like to welcome to the show, Minister Bethenthalvey. Thanks for being here. Great to be with you, Alan. Excellent, excellent. I thought we'd have a, as a bit of an informal chat. I know you've been answering a lot of questions lately about the economy, but for our listeners and viewers, you know, we've been talking a lot about Canadian economy, I guess, uh, and this idea that we're sort of headed to uh, perhaps a, a, a mild recession. And I think over the last couple of quarters, we're kind of skirting that flat line in terms of growth. And uh, well, I guess if we do go into a, a mild recession uh, here in Canada, you know, what do you think uh, or what is the state of the uh, economy in Ontario? Would we follow the rest of the country or can we, uh, I guess, uh, continue to grow even though the rest of the country may be uh, pulling back in terms of growth? You know, that's a really good question. And of course, uh, you know, the classic answer is it depends. Uh, you know, one thing I do know is uh, that I don't know what's around the corner, but I do know uh, that the Ontario's economy is a trillion dollar plus economy, one of the fastest growing economies in the world, one of the fastest growing populations, the fastest growing population of a, of, of a similar size state in North America, and that with our diversified economy, uh, we're able to, you know, weather any sort of storm. It depends on what type of uh, recession is. Is it uh, financial? Is it economic? Uh, what are the, what are the headwinds that are causing that? You know, as you know, we're in very uncertain geopolitical times, and uh, and there's economic risks uh, right across the the planet, be it from China, from Europe, from the U.S. And being a small open market economy here in Canada, we have to always be nimble. But I feel very good about Ontario. I feel very good about Canada. And of course, a lot of people want to come to Ontario. So we have a steady supply of labor. We just have to target the, the types of skills that we need. Building things is very important. Our healthcare system, our education system. So uh, I don't know what's around the corner to answer your question, what type, but what's uh, around the corner economically. Just know that Ontario is very well positioned. Yeah, I know when speaking to Premier Ford a few months ago, he mentioned that a lot of business, a lot of foreign business coming to Ontario. And that's obviously uh, a big thing for, for, for your government trying to, to bring business to Ontario. How, how has that been going over the last uh, uh, few years? You know what attracts businesses, whether they're here and they want to reinvest capital or they want to come from Babat and reinvest capital, is setting up the conditions that they can compete, which is good because they can innovate and thrive. What that means is, you know, you can't do uh, permitting that takes you five years to a maybe, it, you know, cutting regulation, unnecessary red tape uh, that's outdated. Um, they cost inputs, uh, be it uh, energy cost inputs or uh, technology, investing in technology, you know, putting the conditions for more research and development. Um, you know, we have great talent and making sure the education system has the tools to supply the type of labor, be it technology, be it uh, advanced manufacturing, be it skilled trades, be it health services. Um, you know, that that is a competitive advantage. And when companies look at that, uh, they're more certain about getting a return on their investment. So I, I we look at it as what, what are the things we can do to set the conditions uh, for economic growth? And maybe if I can touch on, you know, why does Volkswagen want to create 3,000 jobs here and another 27,000 indirect jobs in St. Thomas. Well, they look at all those things and say, this is a good, good, good people, good markets. We've got land, we've got labor, we've got critical access to critical minerals. We've got one of the cleanest energy grids, not just in North America, but in the world. So for ESG, that's important. Uh, so Ontario has all the key ingredients and that's what drives capital to invest in this great province. Yeah, I know. It uh, sounds fantastic. Um, so I get around a lot and I speak to a lot of small businesses, uh, individuals. Uh, speaking to Dan Kelly, head of CFIB recently, he was on the show a few weeks ago. And, you know, everyone's kind of saying the same thing, that they're struggling 
uh, uh, at this point in time, struggling with higher costs, higher interest rates, inflation still being elevated. You know, what is your government or the Ontario government doing to help these businesses, these individuals cope with obviously a, an environment where we're seeing a lot of a lot of rising costs, uh, whether it's, as I said, from interest rates or, or from inflation? Yeah, it's, that's a very fair question. And uh, I think a, a number of things, if you go back to COVID, which no one likes to do, but I would say we supported many of those businesses that uh, the CFIB represent through uh, bridging, you know, grants, not loans, but grants that uh, they were able to take. Uh, we helped, for example, uh, restaurants and bars. Uh, we reduced the margin on the alcohol that they get from the LCBO. That put something like 100 million bucks a year in their pockets. We allowed for delivery and takeout of alcohol and other things. So we did, th those are more micro targeted to some of their members, but uh, broadly speaking as well, uh, I get back to the conditions, um, you know, the WSIB premiums, uh, being able to reduce those, uh, less less uh, requirement for contributions there because it's fully funded. Um, I think about the gas tax. We just announced again last week, we're extending the gas tax cut. That's 5.3, 5.7 cents a liter, along with other things that we've done, that's 10 cents a liter uh, that they, uh, businesses and people would otherwise have to pay. And, you know, it, it's not just uh, the input cost to heat a, a small business, but it's also, you know, the types of products they produce. You know, if you get the energy costs down and, and provide some relief uh, on a macro level, these are the types of things that uh, we think about uh, in helping uh, small businesses. Yeah, everything uh, at this point in time seems to, to anything can help. Uh, I know that Businesses are, you know, for the most part, especially the smaller businesses struggling at this point in time. I'm just curious, you know, you hear a lot from the Bank of Canada these days. Do you speak to the Bank of Canada? And if you do, how often? Uh, you know, I know that uh, the premier has sent a, a few letters uh, to the Bank of Canada. I know other premiers have done that as well. Do you think any of these uh, letters are making a difference? Do you think what we're saying to them uh is making a difference. I know, obviously, they like to be independent uh, of any political uh, affiliation at all. So uh, do you speak to the Bank of Canada? And if so, do you think you're having any effects? Well, yes, I do speak to the Bank of Canada as a Minister of Finance. And, uh, you know, I think my my take on the Bank of Canada is they have a lot of inputs. They get data and evidence, but they do uh, talk to a lot of people to get a sense of what's going on. And I think as a politician, uh, yeah, they're independent, but uh, I think also I'm, I'm sure uh, people always want to hear what what the condition on the ground is. And that's where Doug Ford and, and our government are very good, talking to people all the time, where they're hurting, what's really impacting. And clearly these higher interest rates, you know, the fastest rise, I think, in, in Bank of Canada history, 10 increases at, to 5% now. I think Prime is over 7%. Uh, it's having its effect. We're, we're, we're feeling it on the ground. People who are refinancing their mortgages, people who are uh, paying increased costs for food and for rent and other inputs. Um, so people are feeling it at a time uh, when there is all this uncertainty. So uh, you'd have to ask the Bank of Canada. I did write the um, Minister of Finance uh, about the Canada Pension Plan and, and because I thought that that's very important that we talk about to provide stability where Alberta pension plan wants to leave the Canada pension plan. And, you know, people work in Alberta and then they retire in many parts of the country and vice versa. So we I think it's important that at this time we, we think about the hardships that people have, the uncertainties they, ha they have and do everything we can to help them. I know a lot of people knew that uh, you're going to be on, uh, on our show. And I guess one of the questions they wanted me to ask you was a question about taxes. Uh, a bit of a sore spot with a lot of Ontarians, I have to admit. Um, I know some individuals, some of my former clients actually have left uh, Ontario for, and, and you know, they alluded to taxes as being one of the issues. Uh, I believe we're something like the fourth highest jurisdiction in terms of taxes uh, in North America. Um, is there anything that the, I guess, provincial government can do to to lessen the, the taxes paid by, uh, by individuals in the province? As I said, I, I think... We, you know, you add the taxes paid, the higher interest costs, the inflation, uh, slowing a business, it, it adds up. And, and uh, so is there anything we can do on that front from a, from a tax perspective? Well, first thing I would say, we already have done a lot of things. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're a government that doesn't believe in taxing and increasing taxes uh, on, on Canadians and Ontarians. Uh, first off, I mentioned the gas tax relief. 
Uh, I, I can also talk about small business tax, which we reduced. We put in a tax credit for manufacturing businesses to invest more in capital. Uh, a very bold uh, tax credit that we announced last uh, last budget. Uh, we talked about the low individual and family tax credit for people making up to $50,000. With that tax rebate, 1.1 million workers in Ontario pay uh, the lowest personal income tax in Canada. So that's helping the people that need most of the help. Now, in terms of people leaving because of taxes, we got half a million people that came to this province last year, and we got probably another half a million coming in this year. So we have a lot more people coming in that uh, that are, are, are leaving. Uh, and I would also say this. Uh, we can't provide more tax relief until we get our fiscal house order. You know, we, we inherited the heart, largest uh, sovereign debt, sub-sovereign debt in the world. We're working very hard to provide fiscal responsibility at the same time as driving economic prosperity. You know, we can't, uh, we won't have a good standard of living or pass it on to the next generation if, if they have to increase taxes and cut spending because we couldn't get our fiscal house in order. I think it's also important that we have a good fiscal uh, plan because uh, you don't know what's around the corner. You want to make sure that you can can handle uh, whatever's around the corner. We talked about the potential uh, economic slowdown. And thirdly, you know, interest expense. You know, the less we borrow, the less we have to uh, pay an in interest expense and the less we have to pay bondholders uh, versus Ontario citizens. And uh, I'm pleased to tell you that our interest expense to revenue is the lowest since the 1980s. We've been able to keep our interest costs through less borrowing, uh, doing more infrastructure borrowing, which is long term. And to uh, and, and we've been terming out our debt over the last five years, six years with long term debt, 30 year bonds at the time when they were much lower. So uh, we're spending the least lesser amounts. It's still going up because interest rates have gone up. But let me just say, you know, it's uh, we're going to continue to be focused on providing um, money in people's pockets so they can reinvest in their business or they can reinvest uh, in their families and households. And uh, obviously, yeah, borrowing a uh, 30-year when the interest rates were low, obviously a great strategy. I guess for my last question, you kind of gave a good segue into it with respect to people coming to the province. And I guess uh, you've been talking a lot about housing recently, housing affordability. And again, as the, the premier on the show uh, was on our show a few months ago, he talked about flooding the, the, the market with as many houses, building as many houses as he as he could. And not sure where that stands at this point in time, but but obviously, uh, housing is, is a big issue. Uh, you mentioned the amount of people that come to this province. A lot of them want to come to southern Ontario. Um, so housing is always uh, an issue. Housing affordability, another issue for individuals. What, you know, obviously an important part uh, of the province, would you say? Yeah, and it comes down to, I mean, without overcomplicating, supply and demand. We know the demand is there, but if we don't create more supply, all types of supply, then we know what's going to happen. Uh, so that's why as part of the budget, for example, I had called on the federal government uh, and our government had over a year ago to uh, cut the HST on rental buildings, um, purpose-built rental buildings. And I had it in my last budget that, hey, feds, we're ready to do it, but you need to, to, to do it. Uh, and they announced about a month ago. So we're now rebating the full 13% of HST for builders who build uh, rental units. Uh, and uh, I've been told that uh, by many that this is a game changer. Uh, so that's just one example of how you you deal with the housing situation. Number two, uh, we announced in the fall economic statement, the Ontario Infrastructure Bank. And uh, one of the areas that I said our focus would be on, for example, is housing. And within housing, I'll give you an example, student housing. You know, we have, um, we have a great world-class education system in this province, but uh, we have a lack of student housing. And, and so that's a natural for us to get built. Obviously, long-term care homes, another area where uh, that's a form of housing for, for people that can't go anywhere else. They can't stay at home any longer. They need that sort of support. Um, we need to have a building of more density. Uh, we need uh, more affordable housing. Uh, we we got to work with the federal government, the city of all cities right across the province to get that done. And uh, I would just call, uh, I, I didn't mention this, but I can't help myself. You know, as we're cutting the gas tax, you know, we, we're calling on the federal government, not just for housing, uh, not only for infrastructure, but provide some relief to Ontarians with uh, cutting the home heating uh, part of the carbon tax. I mean, that's at this time, if you're ever going to do it, 
now is the time to do it. Yeah, and you, we hope that uh, the uh, federal government is listening to some of your ideas because they, they sound great. Uh, Mr. Bethenthalvi, thank you so much for being on our show today. It's been a pleasure to speak with you and uh, provide answers to a lot of the questions I've been receiving from individuals, small businesses. As I said, a pleasure as always. Well, thank you, Alan. Look forward to getting back again with you at, at a future time. Thank you.